in the past, if I had paid 66 euros for pharmaceuticals, I'd expect to be out of my head for the day having a good time. This is just to make me better. Slightly disappointed to pay that much and actually just get my health. You know, I don't even get a little buzz. So what's it like being sick of the minimum wage? It's, um, impractical. Get out. Adults only. Out. A crisis is the most stimulating aspect of the job. The most consistent aspect of the job is unbelievable amounts of boredom. You know you're bored when you're like hoping some kid will shit in the pool or something. Oh man. Oh, that's a fuck. That's not that salad. Could be a problem. <laughs> no, I couldn't help but think, like, who decides, you know what? Right here. Right here. Look at the yellow man is after having a poo. <laughs> who are the people around this kid that go, you know what? Drop it out there, buddy. <laughs> the lifeguards will take care of it. Oh man. Give it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ugh. The toilet. Where it should have went in the first place. But we're qualified for. That's it. <laughs> Saving lives and picking up poo. I've been listening to the radio, the Guel talk that or whatever it's called there for the last hour. <clears throat> listening to a lot of Irish ballads. This kind of stuff. To me, I know that sounds terrible, but to me at the moment, this is all these songs, these Irish songs in a language I can't understand, seem to say, I have no money, I have no money in Ireland, kind of thing. <laughs> That's actually my last 20 euro. Didn't that company pay you as well? I'm not sure. I have to, I'm living off the minimum. Is he going to do the outside of the show? <laughs> Obviously, you want him to. Who <laughs> <laughs> wants a mackerel for today? I've performed. It's out of the deep freeze. It's something else. Why, you have mackerel? Yeah. Will you give us a bit? All right, I will. There's some mackerel here. Oh, thank you. And this is all. Still filming. This is an organic onion. <laughs> now that's good publicity. You fed the starving man. No, outside, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Mary. Mostly burst armbands. Imagine how many children's happiness was destroyed as the air slowly went out of those. It's kind of sad, isn't it? It's not always a happy job. rationalize my behavior, but it gets really boring in the Aquadome. I'll just tell you this right now. And you, you know, there's like the hot, like hot 16, 17, 18 year old girls in there. Like, you know, and I, I look at them from time to time. I'm a human being. And uh, so one day the Spanish girls are in. I'm on the queue to Falling Rapids in my most powerful position. And uh, I just turn to them. I see them and I go, hola. And they go, hola. <laughs> I don't know Spanish. <laughs> Just being nice, okay? Which is the wrong thing to do because once you give them attention, okay? Like, you know, so then they had my number, right? So they're in the lazy river and like every time they pass, they're like. <laughs> and like after three or four trips, I'm like hypnotized, you know? Like I just can't stop watching them. After a while, they take it to the next level and they ask me out, right? So I'm like, girls, all joking aside, I'm 27, okay? You guys are 15. I think that's the end of this conversation. And the Spanish girl, honest to God, she turns to me and she goes, yeah, you're 27, but 15 plus 15, and she points at her friend, equals 30. <laughs> and I was like, you know, you were so right. You know that? I mean, your education system must be brilliant, because your mathematics are untouchable. 
15 plus 15 equals 30 plus 27 is in fact, my friend, 57, which divided by three is an average age of 19. Sister, you are a genius, it has to be said. <laughs> now, vamos, please. I have a comedy career and a life to live. <laughs> They're checking for people leaving euros. If you're gonna learn how to live like a scavenger, you're gonna live off the scraps of society, go to the experts, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I'm saying. You know, the lockers in the Aquadome, everyone forgets about their one euro, and he was like, no, 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 just check the lockers. Out, you know? And I'd be there like. <laughs> and he'd be like, no, 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 like this. And you get the high ones. One of the lockers was broken. I didn't tell anybody about it, but I was getting like three euro a day out of the broken locker. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have survived. It was like my Coke and my snack every day. So it was funny because then you get all these Dublin and school bags coming down, like, you know? And they're straight in at my lockers, man. How many did you get? I'll give us one. Give us one and I'll let you do the rest. I charge them a tax, right? So if I caught any of the Dublin guys collecting money from the thing, they have to give me half of what they collect. I mean, everybody was happy, you know, and certainly I was. Nice one. But you know, they get really melty, like, you know, the Dublin guy's like, ah, fuck off there, my fucking lockers, man. I was here first, like, you know. <laughs> Bro, I think you'll find that's my livelihood there. You can pay us the tax. Come on, give us the tax. See, the problem with having no money to spend is all you can do is spend time. And without any money, spending time is a long business. You certainly get your money's worth with time. Oh, you spend your time today? Yeah, I spent my time. And did you get a good deal out of it? I got everything time could possibly give me. I got every bloody second. Let's do it. <laughs> oh. Smell it. Oh, holy Jesus! <laughs> yeah, that's disgusting. Isn't it? What do you think about a job like this? Did you ever want to do a job like this? No. To be honest, girls, at the moment you're making it more difficult for me. Trying to do a bit of work. Don't be so quick to squeegee. <laughs> it really unnerves you, that job. No, no, like your, your stomach is unsettled and you're like, you don't want to touch yourself. You know what I mean? I just keep thinking about that hair. Jesus Christ, get away from me, man. I, I shouldn't have ate that chocolate beforehand. That was a stupid move. My last day today. I know, right? You want to miss me? I am. I miss you a lot. <laughs> My last day. It's like playing with a baby and then leaving it for somebody else to put to sleep. Being on the minimum wage is like being on the slow float of the lazy river and you slowly float, and it's kind of comfortable because money keeps coming from places where it shouldn't be coming from. That slow, beautiful float. We're done, we're done. <laughs> I'm delighted, you know. But always, you will end up in the deep end. I miss these crazy kids. So if you want to live on the minimum wage, you better be a strong fucking swimmer. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> There's nothing left for me to do. Alright, Carl. See you, man. See you. This is the only country in the world, okay, that you can call in sick. Like this. Sounds like a lonely woman to me. Yeah, no, can't come in today. 
concierge. Dorian. No way, man. Couldn't even see. And Bob, the manager, would be like, I know, I'm dying as well, man. I'll sign you in. Outside my uh, my comedy home, where it pretty much where I, where I honed my craft and where I still am the uh, proprietor of the International Comedy Club. Starting day one of the new job in the Central Hotel, which happens to be well, I can see it from here, but no less than a 30-second walk. I like this area, but it's a bit poncy, you know. A lot of uh, a lot of mochas and paninis. It's for you though, this area. What are you trying to say? I'm a ponce. <laughs> Bed hotel. We are a three star. Some would say a quality three star. I meet the manager. He sits me down and tells me that I'm going to be a porter. That is your job description. He says that the job of a porter is like there's a lot of jobs. I can tell you the porter does everything. It's a good staff we have. They are not highly skilled, but they would be more friendly than your bigger establishment. I've worked two jobs on 6.35 an hour. I get to Dublin, I'm working in the Central Hotel, and I'm getting the huge raise of 6.60 an hour, which is meant to kick in and make up for that extra expense of living in Dublin. 6.60, I'm moving from the bottom to just above the bottom, ladies and gentlemen. You will be under the wing, if you like, of Lorenzo for this week. You'll work alongside him to the Penguins, and then you'll be probably by the weekend to be flying solo. Oh, you got to sweep the street out here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. This is not good, man. Fuck. Every time I'm doing this, you are filming me. Do you understand? Why? Because it takes away the embarrassment. <laughs> Fuck. Why are you embarrassed? Because, you know, I went to college for four years and spent six and a half years building up my comedy career to not be sweeping on the streets, Michael. That's why. Right down the road from where I bloody work. <laughs> Go ahead, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Anyhow. I, I don't know, ask at the reception. Okay. Man, ten years ago there was like no foreign people in Dublin, you know? <laughs> I have in Dublin seven years. Seven years you've been yeah. here? Oh cool. We have to go downstairs now. Oh that's what that means? Yeah, because they pay us, so when they pay us, basically they need you. It's much more of a powerful first day experience. Thrown in the deep end a bit more, I think. A lot of dusting has to be done, huh? Hey, don't forget I'm getting an extra 25 cents an hour. The worst part of the job was the hoovering. Okay, hoovering, no big deal. The hoover in the Central Hotel for the porters is a piece of shit. Every time I went to pick up the hoover, the, the top of it would like come off. And the shit would fall on the floor, and I was like, what kind, of, what kind of an establishment gives you a Hoover that actually creates more work, man? I don't get it, man. Apparently, it had been broken for two years. It makes you think about how they really feel about you as a worker. But this means I have to keep on Hoovering. <laughs> That'll do. Thanks, bro. The Hoover stopped working. When you do that, you get two machine. Pick the ball. That's it. Is that the trick? That's it. I'd lived in, in Waterford with loads of students, and I'd lived in Tralee with like loads of guys that weren't making that much money. And uh, 
then I, we decide we're gonna go for the bed sit in Dublin because you know, it just, it just seems like the right thing to do. Welcome to my new flat. That's my little bed. I chose this place myself and I'm very happy with it. This is my electricity meter. It's one of those turn off lights. So I have to put two euro in here. So I have about 50 cents left of electricity. I like it because it's my place. I don't like paying 90 euros for it. It's got a good vibe though, doesn't it? These guys can never walk in here. You know, that's the difference between a bedsit and like sharing with people. It's like my place. I like that. Fibsborough Road. Every minimum wage worker in Dublin is uh, either working here or living here. Hold on. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> Lorenzo's gone. That's it. I said it to Lorenzo, like, I'll only figure out where the things are when I have to do them on my own. Because otherwise you're just, like, following him. You know what I mean? Oh, there's no cubbies here? Shit. I don't know. I'm a disaster. Oh, this is a real page, yeah? This is the real deal. It's happening now. There's something going on. Will I walk fast to make it seem important? <laughs> There's a funny thing about crap jobs out there, right? Like, everybody assumes that as crap as they are, there's always the little perk. Three, two, seven. <clears throat> okay. People always assume that some dirty woman, some divorcee that's 40 years old is gonna call down and say, oh, can I have a cup of tea brought up to 216? And you come up for a cup of tea and she goes, I hope that tea's hot, because I'm hot, baby. It just doesn't happen that way. She can't turn the hot tap. Sounds like a lonely woman to me. <laughs> Did you get any sex up in 216 or something, you know? Did anyone come up and say, come on, Des, show us your penis? You know, this kind of... Yeah. The luckiest I got was I went up to a room where two old French women didn't know how to use the phone. Oh, mm. mm. And then they were looking at me going, oh, you're so handsome. Ah. <laughs> or even luckier than that, some English guys there going, have you got an iron, mate? I need to iron me Fred Perry. I don't wear a jacket, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's about it, like. Where's Temple Bar? God bless you, good night. I kind of go right back into the mode of high friendly. You know what that is? Well, you know, the Yanks are going to give you the tips. <laughs> That's what it's about. Everyone complains about service in Ireland. Tip. You know, like tip and you'll, you'll get a smile for two euro, that's for sure. That's five euro, bro. That's like nearly an hour's work. Yeah. <laughs> what a feeling. Five euro. The big thing is I made six euro 50 in tips tonight. That was nice, man. Takes the edge off. Tomorrow's Friday, it means I only have six days to go before I get paid. I'm not spending money. I'm just not spending money. Maybe I'm too good at this. Maybe I'm actually too good at the minimum wage. That's <laughs> I love that when the buses pass, man. You know, you just look out the window loads and just watch the world go by and you pray for double-decker buses because they were the most fun, you know? Like, <laughs> when you don't have a TV, man, a double-decker bus is like, oh, double-decker, lovely, you know? It's like a little sneak peek. I started praying for the people in the double-decker to notice me, acknowledge me, just something, you know, some acknowledgement, something that says, hey, I'm alive here, you know? Give us a bus, come on. Give us a bus. Taxi. Taxi. Some days I used to like stand in front of the window naked, just hoping for a reaction, like you know, nothing, ever, nothing. Like nobody just going, <laughs> nothing. I'm not good at symmetry now, let's be honest. I think it's uh, unnecessary. Look at that, look how symmetrical that is. Even the pens are all kind of facing the same direction. Conference notes. But one of the things was setting up the function rooms. You know, it's really funny, because all these people come in, various different retail people, and all these different people use the rooms, and they like think they're really important. And it's really weird the way people come in and say, oh, we're really important, we've rented the room, we're really important. And I was thinking, if you're important, you'd be in the Four Seasons, I think you'll find, ha 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 ha. Oh, you see that? So 
I'm setting it up for eight pads and pens, glass and the coaster, and I decide, okay, that instead of putting the pens all going the same direction, right, I'm going to put the, the, the pens on this side facing out this way and the pens on this side facing out this way, and so it was like a diamond, okay? I was just feeling, yeah, a diamond, that's nice. It's wealthy and, you know, <laughs> diamonds are a girl's best friend and all that kind of stuff. You know, I was like, I was into it. Oh, I think that's a risky move. I like it, though. I think it just works better for me. Oh, there's another satisfying, there's another task achieved. Half an hour later, Robert comes in to check on me. Now, Robert is this Czech guy, and he's been made a manager. Oh, you changed, right? That's sorry, man. I made a decision that I would go to <laughs> But actually, it's also nice. You can do it like, like you want, you know? It's actually your personal style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do your individual style, you know, that's good, you know, you do your individual style. And I was like, yeah, but you just fucking destroyed it, bro. <laughs> do you think it's a bit anal? I'm just wondering, do you think it's a bit anal? No, it's a presentation. I don't think it's actually possible to get it perfectly even. Because not all of them touch and stuff, you know? Nice display, isn't it? Very nice. Makes me feel like I'm part of a fantasy. Under these hats would be all young, attractive women who love porters. I've washed this pot at least 40 times since I moved into this flat. It's just like every day, wash the pot. Hoover, wash the pot. What if you're on a low wage in Dublin and you want to ask a girl out and you got no money? Hey! You, you want to go out on a date with me? He's like, yeah, sure. What do you want to do? Well, you know, I, I, I have nothing. But uh, <laughs> maybe you'll come back to my bed sit. And uh, no, it's really sexy. It's got that kind of bed sits are us carpet. You know, they all come from the same place in the same year, 1972. Yeah, toilet. You get to share a bathroom with people you don't know. Woohoo! Because like all bed sits, I shared a bathroom with the one token alcoholic guy that's in every bed sit complex in Dublin, you know. Imagine the romance when you can say, hey, can I borrow two euro just to have some electricity? <laughs> Look at that. Look how unappealing this looks. <laughs> oh, would you, like, would you like a cup of tea? She's like, yeah, I'd love a cup of tea. I, was, I, I only have one cup, so we have to share it, but uh, it's romantic, right? There you go. Oh, there's your cup of tea. <laughs> there you go. Now I'm going to touch your breasts. <laughs> If you're lucky enough for her to stay throughout that whole sexy date, then that magic moment will come when she'll go, hey, you know, Greg, I just need to go to the loo. And you go, oh, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, Bob is in there right now. <laughs> Tuesday night, I, I was reading the event guide, and I saw there was this free write and recite poetry session. So you write, apparently, and then you recite it. But I went down there. It was supposed to start at 8. There was nobody around. The guys at the bar were like, whatever. So. Even the free entertainment is like unreliable, so. And I, I still had to go on my own. Dublin's lonely, you know. You, when you